Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today, with joyful and grateful hearts, we celebrate the 272nd death anniversary of Venerable Ignacia del Espirito Santo. As one Ignatian Marian family, we mark today over two and a half centuries of remembrance of our life of utmost self-giving and prayer, one that we celebrate as we strive to follow her footsteps. We take on the mantle of the spirituality and way of life of Mother Ignatia, a spirituality rooted in prayer, in prayerful work, and in offering all undertakings for the glory of God. During her lifetime in the 17th century, Mother Ignatia was called to answer the church's needs. She blazed the trail to serve God and others with love and sacrifice. She is a servant of God, a woman for others who lived the gospel message to the full through her act of faith, hope, and charity. As we celebrate her gift to the church and us, let us pray that God's will in her and us be fulfilled, that we may be Im imbued with the spirit like that of Venerable Ignatia, living and loving for Christ with Mary in genuine humility and generosity of heart. Together with our Mass Presider, Reverend Father Kim Lachika of the Society of Jesus, let us all stand and joyfully sing our entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Mayong buntag, Satanan. Mayong buntag, Father. I greet you, uh, first of all, to our sisters of the religious of the Virgin Mary, and to the administrators, faculty, and staff of UIC, uh, on the occasion of Mother Ignatia's uh, death anniversary. Today, we, we are in difficult times, no? uh, and this is a ray of light in the darkness when we remember a heroic woman, a, for me a saint, who exemplified to us that despite difficulties and challenges, uh, we can still be God's instruments uh, for others. Coming together as God's family, let us recall to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to, and to you, you, my brothers, brothers and, sisters, and sisters, that I have I greatly have sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, knowledge inflates with pride, but love builds up. If anyone supposes he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if one loves God, one is known by him. So about eating of meat sacrificed to idols, we know that there is no idol in the world, and there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there are so-called gods in heaven and on earth, yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things are and through whom we exist. But not all have this knowledge. There are some who have been so used to idolatry until now that they eat meat sacrifice to idols. Their conscience, which is weak, is defiled. Thus, through your knowledge, the weak person is brought to destruction, the brother for whom Christ died. When you sin in this way against your brothers and wound their conscience, weak as they are, you are sinning against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I may not cause my brother to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Truly, you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am, I am fairly, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Probe me, O God. And know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if my way is crooked and lead me in the way of old. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. 
Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them. And lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great. And your children, and you will be children of the Most High. For He Himself is kind to ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure packed together, shaken down and overflowing will be poured into your lap. For the measure by which you measure will in return be measured out to you. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today we remember the 272nd death anniversary of Mother Ignacia del Espiritu Santo, foundress of the religious of the Virgin Mary. A remembrance that invites us today to pause and reflect on the significance of this humble, simple, and generous woman whose life is both a testimony of faith and a challenge to serve without counting the cost. As I join you in this celebration, I actually celebrate also another anniversary. My sister Alma, Alma's wedding, 25th wedding anniversary with her husband, Phil. She's really the one who introduced Mother Ignacia to me, being an alumna of UIC herself, graduate of medical technology, I think in 1990. And it was through her that I heard about Mother Ignacia. Although I, I knew before that there was a UIC, but it was a uh, through someone who came from here that uh, uh, made her also learn about many other things like the foundress. So your uh, alumni uh, are actually your evangelizers. So a testimony to your great work here. She described Mother Ignacia to me when she was still a student here as a maverick saint, although forgive the saint because she did not know the, the distinction between venerable, blessed, and saint. But uh, she considered Mother Ignacia, even at that time, a saint. Through the sisters who molded her during that time, and influence her. My sister used to be very timid, shy, indecisive. Uh, being the eldest of the family, I, I would know that. No? <laughs> but when she studied here, she became uh, uh, more of a assertive and uh, decisive eloquent, uh, she liked to talk a lot of things, 
and she would even uh, surpass uh, the rest of the siblings of, uh, by her imaginative thinking. Anyway, um, she she told me that uh, she was influenced by the spirituality of Mother Ignatia. That uh, I thought at that time she would enter, she would uh, become a sister also. But uh, after her studies here, she volunteered um, in the Parplang Barrios in Dabao to become a health worker and then uh, moved uh, to Manila and volunteered in, uh, in some uh, in orthopedic hospital attending to the, the poorest uh, uh, patients there. And then went to U.S., and uh, she is now actually one of the leading, one of the leaders of this United We Dream, no? uh, one of the biggest uh, NGO that help all the immigrant, Latino, uh, Asian immigrants who came to U.S. but pursued because of their illegal status. They, they help them. Um, get the visa, help the, their children to obtain an education, and um, help them to find a job, no? which is a very daring undertaking considering the discrimination against Asians and um, Latinos in San Diego area. But uh, reflecting on what became of her, of my sister, I must have wondered what uh, the kind of education and molding she learned from here. But she always mentioned Mother Ignacia and she always prayed to her like what I heard this morning. <laughs> Praise Jesus and Mary. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's a personal testimony that uh, I saw my sister, my sibling, uh, transformed by what uh, I consider her devotion to Mother Ignacia. My sister portrayed Mother Ignacia as someone who challenged the culture and mindset of her times. When women were relegated to house chores and family responsibilities, it was from my sister that I heard that the young Ignacia left her family to live alone because she lived near the Jesuit house. I think she was... Uh, going through a spiritual exercise uh, to help her decide uh, her future and also to, to, to live a simple, humble life, spiritual life, preparing for her, uh, for her calling, no? which is really to start uh, Beatas at that time. Uh, mother to live alone and started a boarding house for poor young Filipinas, which was uh, unheard in the 17th century milieu. Later on, I moved on to appreciate Mother Ignacia for that maverick character. So a maverick is someone who, uh, in, the, in our language, in the Ignatian spirituality, we call that agere contra. No? So you move against the grain. The grain no? So... Uh, it came from the perspective that given a choice without thinking, we follow the script of who we are told we are. The script that our parents tell us who we are. <laughs> that the script of our culture that we should be stuck here in Davao or uh, we should follow the 90% of the population, uh, get married, uh, get a good job, retire, and enjoy the rest of your life. <laughs> so, we, we live a script. No? And uh, Mother Ignacia was, like, was different. And it was that example that inspired my sister. No? That maverick character. The capacity to really move against stereotypes no? and mindsets. And um, really... To ask oneself, what do I want? What do I offer my life to? Uh, and it must have come from her deep spirituality. 
Mother Ignacia is so much ahead of her times of what she started and cultivated in the minds of young women today to choose for oneself and the dedication of one's life for a noble cause or aspiration. To choose is hard to do, even choosing that which is the desire of another. In today's gospel, Jesus proposed a difficult ideal for his disciples. If they want to follow him, if and then, you know, Jesus say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who entreat you badly, to the man who slaps you on one cheek, present the other cheek too, to the man who takes your cloak from you, do not refuse your tunic, give to everyone who asks you, and do not ask for your property back from the man who robs you. Treat others as you would like them to treat you. That's difficult. Even myself, each one of us, if we want to follow Jesus, this is the hard deal. This is a difficult challenge, right? It's not easy. It's not easy to forgive your enemy, especially if that enemy hurt you the most. It can be your spouse, it can be your sibling, it can be your best friend. So it's not easy. The young Ignatia may have gone through the same ordeal of decision making and might have resisted all the efforts of her parents, relatives, and others to deter her from what she desired. She chose the ideal, the hard ideal of Jesus, she decided to offer and dedicate her life to Christ like Mary's fiat of self-offering, following the quiet, simple, yet decisive discipleship of Mary, the young Ignatia did just that, became a follower of Jesus through Mary. We may ask, what gave her courage and persistence to pursue this seemingly lonely path of life which exemplifies the path of many heroic leaders of our times. Because some of our greatest leaders that we admire today follow that path. Adjere contra. Abraham Salisnik of Harvard University, one of the most prominent authors on leadership theory, describes the phenomenon of leaders as twice born. Leaders are twice born. Well, the phenomenon of twice born is that, uh, well, there's nothing we can do with, uh, when and what we are born to. Okay. So when we were born, we have no, actually, we have no choice regarding our parents, where we live, why we look this way. There's nothing we can do about that. It's a given. But uh, we can choose who we want to be. We can choose how to die. <laughs> we can choose how we live our life and lead it to a death that we desire. Some of us... Uh, simply follow the, the, the course of life no? and uh, indulgence to the comforts of our comfortable zone. No? That's why we get diabetes, we become obese, or we, we become, uh, we live a sedentary life because life is, because in that environment, it is so comfortable. So Abraham Salisnik of Harvard described a mindset of self-actualizing people who change societies and civilization through their non-conforming maverick ideas. Think of Mother Teresa, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and others. Most of these people went through dramatic and sometimes or quiet 
conversion experiences which led them to choose how they are going to die. This reminds me also of our founder, St. Ignatius of Loyola. And not to live the life they are born with, with caution and comfort of their cultural stereotypes and social norms. For Mother Ignatia, it was just, it was not just wishful thinking or rational appreciation of her innate capabilities and talents that led her to do what she did. It was her relationship with God and devotion to His will that shaped her personality and character. Through prayer, through constant listening and discerning, she must have her heard the call of the Lord in the serenity of her soul, compelling her, follow me. Today we celebrate not her birthday, but death anniversary, a pro proper tribute to a woman who chose how she would die gladly in God's service and grace. Perhaps this, she is a challenge to us too, especially today in the period of pandemic. We are asked what we are called to respond lovingly and generously to the challenge, especially of Pope Francis and the church. Pope Francis described our, our mission today as being placed in a field hospital. The church is a field hospital. What is a field hospital? Um, according to Pope Francis, it is a place where we can heal wounds and warm hearts. Reflecting on this today, uh, while we are going through this pandemic, uh, we also recognize certain reactions to the situation. Many of us are, tend to isolate ourselves in fear and dread. Uh, sometimes we, we, uh, we distant ourselves, no? even from those who we recognize are not infected. No? Uh, normally, COVID is associated with uh, in Davao with those who came from abroad or from Manila, where the highest uh, rate happens, uh, is uh, indicated. But even among us, even if we know that uh, someone is not infected, we still avoid the other. <laughs> Sometimes we use the pandemic to increase our distance from people we don't like. Probably the challenge there is uh, maybe we should not use the pandemic as an excuse. But more importantly, as we are vulnerable to it, and it can happen anytime, no? uh, we are not paralyzed. We are not uh, depressed at the thought that there's nothing we can do. That's why, like Mother Ignacia, we pray not just for those who are afflicted with the disease, not just for the health workers, but for our own. That given the grace of God through the faithful, we can find a way that we can be helpful, that we can be caring, that we can be an inspiring presence to someone in need. One of the studies now, um, I think UST did this recently, that uh, most of us worry about the physiological effect of, uh, of COVID-19. But there is an increasing um, uh, incidence of uh, domestic violence no? in, the, in, in, the, in the house, in the home. No? There are also increasing cases of mental health problems. People simply cannot just be contained. No? People who love social life uh, are beginning to feel the ill effects of this on their habits. No? 
So, there are many issues arising from this uh, situation that are beyond medical, uh, relational, uh, sociological, psychological, and so on. So, in all of this, where are we being called by God to give witness to His presence as a healer, as a comforter, as a consoler, as a friend. So may Mother Ignacia inspire us by her love, care, devotion, and prayer in this way. Amen. God calls His chosen ones to fulfill His will. Let us pray confidently to our Father, knowing that He wishes His people to intercede for the world. Let our response be, Father, hear us in Christ. Father, hear us in Christ. That the Church, through the Pope and bishops, may lead us to the fullness of Christian life. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, hear us in Christ. That government leaders may guide our nation to the future stability and development of our country. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father hear, us, hear in us in Christ. That like Mother Ignatia, we may persevere and be faithful in the vocation God has called to us undertake. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, hear us in Christ. That the old, the sick, and the lonely may realize God's presence in their trials and difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father hear, hear us, us in, in Christ. Christ. That the youth may be given the grace and wisdom as they face the challenges of life and keep them humble in a heart that they will learn to gaze on Jesus day by day, knowing that without Him, they can do nothing, but in His strength, He will lead and guide in all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father, hear, us, hear in us in Christ. That as we celebrate the 272nd death anniversary of Mother Ignatia, may we persevere in doing the will and action of God in our daily life. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, hear us in Christ. That the dead may be rest in the peace of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, hear us in Christ. Almighty God, as we make these prayers, we come to do your will. Accept us in your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who gave us the gift of true prayer and peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to, to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in the crowning of their merits, you crown your own gifts. By, the, by way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by a great cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels, with the great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race and who always walked with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us into unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Romulo, our Bishop, with all bishop, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially those who died of COVID-19, who have fallen asleep in the hope of your Christ and all the dead people we know, members of our family and others who suffered. Like the Filipino sailors who died of the coast of Japan, our OFW, who died away from their homeland. Admit them all to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. In communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, and all the saints, including Mother Ignatia, we remember her today. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. now pray to the Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power, and the glory are yours, yours now, and, now forever. and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign. 
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away, the, take sins away of the, the sin of the world, mercy. have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, only say but only word. say the word, and my soul shall be healed. me 
I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us together pray the Oratio Imperata. God, our Father, we come to you in our need. to stem its transmission, protect the medical experts, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all. And, and to, to help, help those, those in, need. in need. We, we implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to and save, save us from our fears. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, who lives and, reigns and reigns with you in, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. We fly, we fly to your, your protection, O Holy, Holy Mother of God, do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our, our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, Pray for us. Saint Rock, Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungso, Pray for us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for the word of thanks. Good morning, everyone. Praise be Jesus and Mary. On behalf of the University of the Immaculate Conception community, we would like to thank our Almighty God for the blessings that we have received in this Holy Mass as we commemorate the 272nd death anniversary of Venerable Mother Ignacia del Espiritu Santo with our Mass presider, Reverend Father Kim Lachica of the Society of Jesus. Thank you for your time and reflection you shared to us. Our gratitude is full and goes beyond the memory of our hearts. Your presence, loving concern, and prayers are affirmations of God's goodness and love. We will be forever thankful. Also, we would like to thank our RVM sisters, lectors, the choir, the organist, the faculty and support service personnel, and most especially to our beloved students. Thank you so much, everyone. May God bless us always, and may the spirit of love and compassion be with us always.
glorified over all the earth in your saints, men and women, distinguished by a wholehearted service and love for you. Through them, you have established religious congregations in your church. In your goodness and mercy, you have looked with favor on your people in the Philippines and have chosen from among them your lowly handmaid, Venerable Ignacia del Espiritu Santo, to be the foundress of a religious family under the special protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We humbly ask you then to glorify your name in her by performing the miracles needed for her beatification through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May her prayers and intercession obtain for us the favors we ask for, particularly that of remaining ever faithful to your love and service. Amen. Venerable Ignacia del Espiritu Santo, pray for us. Holy Mary, Virgin Mother of God, who was conceived without sin, I choose you as Lady and Queen of this school and our respective homes. I entreat you by your Immaculate Conception that you will preserve it and all who dwell therein from plague, sickness, fire, water, lightning and tempest, from earthquake, robbers, wickedness of rebels, acts of terrorism, schisms, heresy, and sudden death. Bless and protect us, O Holy Virgin, and obtain for us the grace to avoid sin and to be preserved from all other misfortunes and disasters. Amen. Amen. 